Hello everyone, today I want to talk about the new upcoming character Emily and hopefully help you figure out if she fits your playstyle and team composition, so ultimately if this character is worth your wishes. Also at the time I recorded this video I didn't exactly know how to pronounce her name correctly, I think I got confused by the spelling so I apologize for that. First, let's quickly cover our scale kit, and the normal attacks aren't too interesting, so let's skip straight to the elemental skill. It summons a totem-like thingy similar to Yai Miko's elemental skill, which attacks nearby monsters. Luminous Case, I believe it is called. It also has a similar level up mechanic, which triggers when enemies have the burning status effect nearby. The damage at level 2 is also significantly higher, so burning is a priority. As for the burst skill, it summons a level 3 case, and similar to Dia, it will pack up the elemental skill 1 and resummon it after the burst skill is over. As for passive skills, the first one, your team takes less damage from burning, like the status effect itself, not burning enemies. As for the second one, the luminous case from her elemental skill will periodically deal extra damage when there are burning enemies around. And the last one, Emil does extra damage to burning enemies based on her attack stat. I think it's capped out at 3000 if I'm not mistaken about this. At this point, it's probably very clear that you need some pyro characters in your team for burning. Without it, Emil loses a lot of damage, if not most of it. After this, it's pretty straightforward though. You press her buttons, and that's about it. Like most sub DPS, she will just do her thing while being off field. Speaking of sub DPS, when Shiori released, one thing that was immediately noticeable was the very short range of her puppets and the difficulty of repositioning them due to her longer cooldown on the elemental skill. For Emil, the this is also a real possibility, but it's obviously impossible to tell before actually playing her. If you have Shiori and this was really annoying to you, I would strongly advise to play Emil's free trial first and especially pay attention to this. Also, in general, play the trial first, obviously. I think this character is actually quite easy and straightforward to build because there are a lot of stats that you can basically ignore. I think her burst skill is quite cheap so energy recharge doesn't seem to be a high priority. And the same can be said for elemental mastery because one, the burning reaction isn't super impressive and two, a lot of her skills have really nice modifiers so the, I think the scaling with crit crit damage, attack especially because both of her passive scales scale of it and of course dendro damage for this character seem to be quite straightforward. So again dendro damage, crit crit damage and attack are the ones that you care about. As for weapon options, I think there are definitely some nice 4 stars. First of all, like I said before, both of her passive skills scale off attack, so having a weapon that provides a lot of extra attack until you hit the breakpoint, I, I believe it was like 3000, will provide a lot of extra damage. So speaking of which, the Missive Wind Spear, if you manage to pick it up from the event, it definitely provides exactly what she wants. Otherwise, if you don't have it and you put some on the weapon banner and picks up a Lithic Spear, it can do quite uh, basically the same. If, especially if you pick up a character like Zhongli or Baiju, any character from Li Wei to scale this effect as well. And then, if you don't have any of those options, it's getting a little tougher because the Favonius Lance has a nice base attack, but you don't really care too much about the energy. And the Dragon Span is kind of weird as well because you have this effect with a lot of extra pyro um, application from the burning effect. You might get this damage modifier from its effect, but the base attack is so low that you will lose a lot of damage there. But these two can be fine instead. As for artifacts, pretty straightforward again, just look for the substats mentioned earlier, and for main stats, I think for the sense it's definitely attack percentage. For the cup, this is probably theory crafter territory, but my guess would be dendro damage is still higher value than attack percentage, and for the last slot, I think it's definitely crit or crit damage, I would be super shocked if it wasn't. Then for the set, I think deep word memories can be quite good, especially if you go for dendro resonance with another character like Nahida, you get a lot of extra value, otherwise, of course, the new set will with the, um, where is it, the um, extra damage when you have burning enemies nearby is really nice as well for her. As for team compositions, Emil is definitely a sub DPS character, so you're looking for one more character that can fill a little bit of field time, typically a main DPS, and in the remaining two slots you're looking for more sub DPS characters or utility characters. As for archetypes, I think there are two I can mainly see, one is just full on burning and the other one is the melt burn team. This came first up I believe with like something like Ganyu Nahida and I think it was something like 
idea and uh, Zhongli maybe, I don't remember quite well, but you trigger a lot of burning between these two characters obviously and then the pyro uh, sorry, Cryo main DPS character can do a lot of extra melt damage off it. And the good thing about Nahida here is when you have a Cryo main DPS and the one that is dealing the melt damage, then the extra elemental mastery is really good. If you do it the other way around, it is quite awkward if you have like Rosaria melting and a Pyro main DPS. When Alekino came around, I even suggested this team and said that a lot of the extra um, elemental mastery value from Nahida is lost here because the one that is melting here will be Rosaria who is off field and doesn't get the extra elemental mastery. And I kind of asked um, for a new Dendro sub DPS who could fix this problem and a few months later here, here we are, I get exactly what I wanted. I think this team is exactly what I imagined pretty much and we have a like a melt burn team for pyro main dps instead of alekino you can definitely pick uh, any other like here uh, pyro main dps hutao whatever but the problem is i think instead of rosaro we don't have good cryo sub dps so i think she is kind of mandatory for this for the utility character, Zhongli is fine, you can go for Pyro Resonance with Bennett or Dendro Resonance with Baiju, it's completely fine, I don't think it makes a big difference. And then when it comes to full on burning, I think the first team that comes to mind is definitely the full on Lenny team with triple Pyro character to maximum stack him with like uh, Zhangling and Bennett and of course Emil. And instead of um, Zhangling, we can do a slight iteration and pick Dia again, but I think this is about it when it comes to burning with the Lenny teams. And then for some more options for burning, of course something like Dendro Resonance with Baiju and Baiju just for sustain is pretty nice, then Kazuo for the damage buffs and any Pyro main DPS will just do fine to enable the burning. Instead of this, you can also go for something like for example a Dendro main DPS with Alhatham, you drop Baiju and pick something like Toma. Toma is often used for Burgeon and has a very high elemental mastery build anyway, so of course you can also use it just for straight up burning to get extra damage on the burning. And instead of this you can also drop um, something like a Hatham for Sucrose for she's often used in like taser teams as like an on-field character so the same works for this as well instead of this you can obviously also pick something like a Nahida again Alright, we made it to the end. I hope this was somewhat helpful to figure out if this character appeals to you. I will get Emil and try her out, so stay tuned for that. Until then, have fun and bye bye.